Hey, what's up guys? It's Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions. Welcome back. Uh, I kind of feel that this video has been a long time coming. Um, I, I've done, uh, you know, a lot of knife reviews, some on big knives, some on small knives, some on budget knives, some on, you know, uh, slightly expensive knives, a little more expensive. Uh, no, per, you know, uh, customs just yet. But um, one thing that I did want to stress is you know, I feel that the most knives that get uh, use in my collection are um, office-friendly carry-style knives. They're typically the smaller knives with, you know, the three-inch blade, uh, inch blade, maybe under. Um, typically, you'll see them in something, you know, like a, a G10 or, you know, kind of an exotic more handle. And um, I, I felt that it was time for me to go ahead and, and talk about five uh knives that i feel are nice and office friendly they're 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 great for that gentleman's carry or that office friendly carry uh if you happen to carry you know in church and slacks uh if you're at the office you know to take out something to be able to go ahead and, and you know uh food prep or even you know at a meeting and you have to go ahead and open something you know like a box or a letter that sort of thing these are the kind of knives you can take out and they are not going to be you know uh so uh they're going to be more unassuming. People aren't going to see it and they're like, oh my gosh, they're going to freak out. You're always going to get those people that are going to freak out about a knife. But for the most part, these are generally regarded as potentially safe knives. And um, I'd like to go ahead and talk about these five. So um, go ahead and stay tuned. Uh, and after the intro, we'll go ahead and talk about each of these. taking a moment uh, <laughs> while the, the intro passed through. So originally I had a different kind of format for this uh, uh, video, but I did want to go ahead and touch up on five knives that I think that would make great uh, office or gentleman's carry. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just start it off like this and talk a little bit about each one and, um, you know, things I like, maybe a couple things I don't like, and then I'll leave the rest up to you. Uh, most of these are going to be in the budget category. There are going to be some that are going to be a little bit more expensive. Some are just going to seem a little bit more expensive because of the materials that they use. But depending on the one that I show you, sometimes they're going to range anywhere from, say, $35 all the way up to about $125. So we're going to start off with one that I feel um, is, is kind of taking a bit of a jab to the Ontario uh, 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 Knife Company's Rat Series, and that's the CJRB Feldspar. Now, there are two versions of this. this is the, there's the standard, and then there's this version, which is the small. Um, they have a few versions uh, as far as G10 is concerned. I really like the fact that they're using uh, Contour G10, uh, which is something that you don't really see often in knives at this budget line. You're going to see about the, anywhere from the, the $30 to $50 range uh, for these. And um, you get them in different types of G10. You do have the uh, the copper uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is the, uh, no, excuse me, the Phosphor Bronze, I think, uh, uh, a pivot collar. I could be wrong, um, but it's a nice little backdrop. It gives it some nice pop on the G10, which this is the very highly sought after and typically sold out version in Jade. Um, you can go ahead and dye this a variety of different colors, or you can just leave it as is. I really like it as is. Um, it is tapped for left and right hand carry or for a lanyard if you choose. And it has a nice open uh, uh, you know, construction in the back. You have just that one standoff and um, it is uh, tipped for a lanyard. Um, the, uh, the deep carry clip is actually uh, positioned inside of the G10 scale and you can actually see on here that you actually have a hole on the left side uh, in case you wanna go ahead and swap it out and put it on the left hand side so it sits inside of the handle but the screws are not flat so they sit a bit proud of the actual uh, pocket clip which makes it kind of you, you would think that it would make it snag onto your jeans or you know your khakis you know your slacks anything that you choose um, and, and it actually doesn't um, which is kind of surprising with this kind of knife um, and maybe that's the reason why they chose not to go with you know countersunk or flat screws because it just doesn't happen to have that issue now it's not uh, they're, they're not skeletonized liners but the uh, the liners are nice and thin and they are they kind of reminds me of the Delica when you look at the liners because they are 
um, uh, inside of the actual G10 instead of just kind of proud and, and thick uh, outside of the, the G10 like you would see on the Tangram knives on Rillo and a lot of other budget knives that you would see like the uh, Civiti Elementum, which both of which we'll get to in a second. Um, I mean, I really like the fact that this uh, knife is, is extremely smooth. It runs off of washers, uh, excuse me, off of... Uh, uh, Oh my gosh, I, I can't believe that I that I totally forgot about this, but this is on bearings, it's not on washers. Um, and that's what kind of makes it differ from the Ontario Knife Rat series. I mean, you have the G10 scales or I guess FRN, GFN, believe it or not guys, it's all plastic, but these are contoured unlike flat, uh, you know, G10 scales that, or even contoured uh, FRN or plastic scales that you'd see on a lot of knives like the Ontario Knives uh, Rat series. And um, it is on bearings instead of phosphor bronze washers. And this is a thumb stud opening knife. You do not have um, a jimping on here. So that's something to consider. The blade shape is actually really nice. Uh, this is a drop point and uh, it's not a full flat grind, but it's it's got a nice, you know, thinness uh, behind the edge to where you're gonna get pretty much every, uh, any uh, cutting related or, or even piercing task that you need to have done uh, taken care of with this knife. I really like uh, this knife a lot. And I think that with the variety that it comes in and the fact that you can get this in the small version, which is this one, uh, uh, which is great for the office and maybe the large version for just everyday carry, this makes a really nice one-two punch, kind of like the Ontario Knife Company's Rat 1 and Rat too. Maybe that's the market that they're trying to get at. Um, you don't have an Aussie version, uh, which is a little bit cheaper and step down from uh, Ontario uh, knives. But for the price of the Aus 8 from Ontario knives, you're probably going to be able to find one of these in D2, which is great. And they haven't had a problem with their D2 as of late from CJRB. So I would be putting my money on this guy. Uh, I think that they've done really well with it. And um, I plan on, on continuing to, uh, to use this one. Uh, and keep it in my pocket uh, for quite some time. So this is actually the CJRB uh, Feldspar Small. This is one of the really nice knives that I feel that you could use not only in the office, uh, you know, Monday through Thursday, but also for casual Fridays if you happen to, uh, you know, uh, have a casual Friday at your office. So I think it makes a really good EDC knife and it makes a really good, uh, you know, everyday, everywhere carry actually, whether it's in the office or out on the street. So this is something I really uh, I really am interested in uh, seeing a little bit more of and, and maybe even seeing like a My Carter version. Uh, but for now, I think this is a really nice addition to their lineup with their Deep Carry, their Contour G10, their D2 Steel, and just a, a nice little flair to it. I like it a lot. The action is great and I really highly recommend it. So yeah, the CJRB Feldspar, this is the small version. You can get the small and the large version uh, for most big box stores from uh, CJRB, which is basically Artisan Cutlery's budget line. Okay, so we discussed the CJRB Feldspar small, and speaking of small, this is probably the smallest knife that you're going to see on this lineup. Uh, this is an Ostop Hell design that is uh, uh, made specifically for uh, Best Tech knives. This is the most expensive of the line that you're going to be seeing as well. This is going to run about 126, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 149 MSRP, and this is based on uh, the upcoming Best Tech bouquet, which is uh, a vision that Ostop Hell has made. For the line itself, this is uh, the Tulip. Uh, this is based on uh, a, a kind of melding of the design between the, um, the the Tulip flower, which is where you get a lot of these kind of like uh, these nuances for like the petals and and in the actual frame and uh, the, the the circular motion of the. Um, the pivot, just uh, that, that overall design, and the Japanese kiridashi, which explains the blade style. It kind of reminds me of a very, very fancy uh, X-Acto knife, to be completely honest. And uh, they come in two versions. If for whatever reason you cannot use the frame lock, they have the ball lock as well, which is basically uh, a non-locking version. And uh, unlike any of the other knives on this particular list, uh, this is a front flipper. 
and uh, I actually just, you know, I open it that way because I think it's kind of cool uh, to open that way, but you can roll it out that way. And uh, depending on how big your, your hand is and how you catch it, you can try and uh, uh, flick it open like that. That doesn't always happen because I'm, I'm not really that proficient with front flippers, but um, if anybody knows how to make a front flipper, it is O Stop Hell. This is an O Stop Hell design, an M390 from Best Tech Knives, has some nice jimping here and just the overall uh, uh, design on it. it has a nice little curvature here you can go ahead and place it in the webbing of your hand use your index finger here and get some nice precision cuts it makes a really good uh, pocket knife that's very unassuming that you can just pull out and, and just open very slick like at the office or just keep in your fifth pocket but this isn't a kind of knife that you would want to just hand off to somebody you know, like any other knife, like say this is the small, uh, the, the, the mini sheepdog. This, you can hand it to anybody. This is a flipper. They can open it and it's pretty easy to open. This is not that kind of a knife. This is the kind of knife that, you know, you give it to somebody and they open it wrong, this will come out and, you know, they'll end up biting themselves. And I can tell you that even though, you know, I know how to open knives and I'm no stranger to front flippers, especially to old stop hell designs, like the Real Steel Metamorph, which is a knife that I actually, uh, uh, reviewed uh, on the channel, uh, you know, some time ago, um, I actually bit myself uh, with this particular uh, knife because of the fact that it opened a little bit and I didn't realize it ended up hitting me. So uh, it bit me pretty good. Uh, it got me. The knives don't typically do that, but the smaller the knife, the, the more likely it's going to do that. It is running on bearings and uh, yeah, is, I mean, it is a lot to like. I mean, you have this kind of, uh, this isn't titanium, this is titanium, and um, this is a new for 2020 version. This is kind of like a uh, an aged titanium. You can see the corners have actually kind of been aged a little bit, so you can see the uh, kind of like a bronzing underneath, and this is kind of like a blackened uh, titanium, and then the, uh, the, 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 the pivot and the uh, screw at the base here, as well as the, the screw that holds the... Uh, the, the, the pocket clip have, uh, it, it's kind of like that nice satinized clip, uh, uh, excuse me, satinized look, um, which really pops on, on this particular knife. Um, there are different versions that they have come out with. If I'm not mistaken, they already have some out in uh, pink titanium. They have purple titanium, blue titanium, and gray. Um, but this is, you know, a based and built mostly on curves, you know, arcs, circles. That's the kind of thing that... Uh, Ostop had mentioned when he created this knife. In fact, I think his wife had brought home some tulips and he was, you know, kind of in, in one of those uh, uh, designer's blocks, uh, you know, when, when you're coming out with a brand new knife and he, you know, he just got that, that, uh, uh, idea in his head he kind of put his idea onto paper and this is actually what came out of it so I thought it was pretty cool I mean you know you see the inspiration especially when it's closed you know the handle is kind of shaped so that you know like I mentioned before with the petals and that closed you know tulip flower and um it's it, it is really nice but I mean it's you know, it will cut, it will keel, like I think Doug Marcotta says in uh, uh, Forged in Fire, uh, I believe that's what it's called, the the, the show. Um, and it's, it is the first, but definitely it's not the last uh, flower design that you're going to see from Ostop Hell in Best X line. Um, he, he did mention, you know, something I believe in Knife News that he's coming up with a few designs that are, are flower based and it is going to be considered the best tech bouquet. Now, um, this is the most expensive out of all of these. This is an M390, this is titanium, uh, this is a front flipper, so it's very different from the other ones, but this is gonna run you about $126. Maybe a little bit cheaper if you can find this on White Mountain Knives, they usually have those 10% off discounts. But um, yeah, this is a great little uh, uh, fifth pocket knife, but... Um, being that it is a front flipper and being that the blade is so small and this is just an overall small knife i do not uh, recommend this for novices and people that are just getting into either front flippers or just knives in general because this isn't going to be this is going to be very easy for you to cut yourself and uh, this isn't the kind of knife that you hand off to somebody so i do recommend this to somebody that has already used knives and actually understands the care uh, that that comes into you know using a knife not only of this this size but of this type. So again, this is the Best Tech Tulip, 
M390, this is the frame lock version, but you can also get a ball lock version, which is great for those locations that do not allow locking knives. This is a very small knife overall. I believe it's about four inches overall with 1.3 or 1.4 inches for the blade. Um, very usable blade shape. And uh, yeah, overall, really nice old stop held design. Again, the best tech tulip. All right, so we have seen uh, Contour G10. We have seen uh, Mill Titanium. Why don't we go ahead and show off some wood? <laughs> this is the Civivi Elementum from uh, Civivi Knives. This is the budget line for uh, we Knife Company. And they have really, really, really created an awesome design uh, with the Elementum. You get a bunch of different styles out of this particular knife. This is the, the ebony wood version, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, aside from ebony wood, they've got rosewood, uh, they've got micarta, they've got carbon fiber. You can get this in G10. And if you're um, a fan of Blade HQ and you're shopping with them, they do have limited versions that came out with brass and copper handles. You're looking at uh, about 63 to $64 for this version. This comes with D2 steel. In fact, all of them, with the exception of the carbon fiber version, come out with D2 steel. Um, the, the carbon fiber version actually has Damascus, um, and th this is going to range anywhere from 50 on the low range for the G10 to about 90, uh, which is where that, that kind of uh, pricing roof goes as of right now for the carbon fiber and the Damascus. Um, this is the C907. I think this is, this is a very, very uh, a uh, nice meld between the, the gentleman's office friendly knife and the, you know, um, casual Friday kind of style knife and even just an everyday carry. Uh, it's under uh, three inches in the blade. I think it's 2.97 and the overall weight is 2.89 ounces. You have a hollow ground D2 steel blade. Uh, this one is a satin blade. And um, one thing I really like about this particular version is that um, the blade itself, unlike a lot of the other blades that you're going to see in this video, it's completely sterile. You don't see anything on it except for some really, really small writing right here at the bottom that states D2. And that's just the designation of the steel, um, which, by the way, Civivi does a great job. I love the fact that it's a C, by the way, because my name is Carlos and I freaking love it. That puts the C in DCS. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's great to carry. This is the Civivi Elementum uh, deep uh, carry pocket clip in all the versions. Um, but like uh, in all the versions with the deep carry pocket clip, you do get the lanyard hole, but you do not get a left-handed carry. That kind of stinks for the left-handed people, but it is what it is. Sorry, guys. And, and by now, you, you should know that there are enough knives out there that uh, are, are, you know, right-hand tip-up carry only that you got to kind of learn how to be able to carry that way. So, uh, no, you know, not to... Uh, not to, no, to, to scoff at the, the left-handed people, but as a right-handed person, I don't suffer from that issue. So um, there you have it, guys. This is the Civivi Elementum. This is a great office, uh, uh, you know, um, office carry for gentlemen, for, you know, the, the, the worker, for somebody who really needs something that works well. Um, you know, you can get it in a bunch of different pricing, anywhere from $50 to $90, anything from G10 all the way up to copper, carbon fiber, micarta, ebony, and rosewood. You get it, it's uh, overall less than seven inches and it's running on bearings. Great, great setup from Civivi. This is the Civivi Elementum. Now, a company that hasn't been uh, showing off a lot of its uh, designs for a bit, and I'm kind of surprised because they have really, really, really good uh, opening in, in designs coming right out the gate, was Tangram Knives. And this is one of their flippers uh, called the Tangram Amarillo. Uh, Amarillo is a place, I believe it's in Texas, um, uh, and um, Amarillo is actually also the designation for yellow in Spanish, uh, but it's stated differently. It's, it's uh, mentioned as Amarillo. This is an Azo design. Um, the Tangram line is actually the budget line that Kaiser came out with, but has since uh, probably hasn't released much from the Tangram line in, uh, I don't know, a little bit over a year. Uh, you heard a lot about it in 2018. They came out with a lot of different versions and designs. They had the Santa Fe, they had the Vector, they had the Amarillo, they had, um, you know, just a lot of different uh, uh, designs, some some button locks, some flippers, some thumb stud versions, and uh, a lot of nice blade designs. This is actually one of their smaller versions 
of their knives. This is the Amarillo. Unlike any of the other ones that you see in this video, this is the only one that comes out in Akuto 440 steel. That's something that has been um, very unique with the Tangram line. And uh, I like it because that's not a steel that you see all the time. This is uh, stonewashed uh, Akuto 440. Uh, this is an Azo design. I love Azo as a designer. He's he's created a lot of really great uh, Kaiser designs. One of my favorite knives, the, the Basalt, is actually an Azo design. And um, uh, th this particular one from Tangram uh, came out in, like I said, the Akuto 440 steel. Uh, this is Aichi steel. It's Japanese. It's meant to increase the cutting ability out of just your standard 440C. So it is a stainless steel, unlike uh, D2, which is a semi-stainless. Um, it it's gonna have more corrosion resistance. Now, granted, it's not gonna cut as well as D2, but that's because of the fact that um, this is a different composition. It is supposed to cut much better than 440C. And I mean, being that it doesn't cut as well as D2, in all honesty, it's nothing to scoff at either. Um, uh, Cedric and Ada Outdoors actually did a, uh, a YouTube video on this quite some time ago, cutting cis rope and uh, this thing did fantastic. I, I, I want to say it, with budget steels, uh, you know, all, all shit aside, um, while I like D2, I really like seeing Akuto 440 and 14C28N. Those are probably my favorite budget steels. And um, so, I mean, I really like this knife. It is very small. It's it's small, but it's not too, too small. It's about as small as you get as, you know, a, um, a uh, casual Friday or an office knife. Uh, I like the fact that the clip is slightly stonewashed, so it's not gonna gleam too much. And it's nice to be able to have a light colored clip, unlike these dark carry clips that you can carry in your, you know, your black or gray pants. This is something you can carry more in, in your khakis, which reminds me a lot of the, the Feldspar kind of clip. You have that deep carry clip. Um, now, unlike a lot of these other knives, and like the Feldspar, you can actually carry it uh, left hand or right hand. So congratulations, left-handers, you can get that there. Now, another thing I like about is that you can pick it up on Amazon Prime. You can get this in two days and you can get it in different colors. I believe they have it in black, in brown, and in kind of like a greenish color. It's kind of an odd green. I don't want to say it's, you know, like green, green, and it's not really like gray. It's kind of like a green gray. So um, I, I did want to talk about that. Now it is on uh, phosphor bronze washers. Last time I checked, I believe, and they did skeletonize the liners, which are stainless steel. Um, you, you do have a really cool, kind of like a Bowie style um, uh, point on here. It's a nice flat grind and um, you do get a lot of cutability out of this. The piercing, uh, because of the fact that it has this nice uh, tip to it, uh, it, it, it actually works surprisingly well and it's surprisingly nimble for being a small knife. You can get three fingers here and you can kind of curve your fourth uh, finger at the bottom and you can get a nice reverse grip as well because you do have the flipper tab that is um, uh, that does have some jimping at the end of it to be able to go ahead and catch against your pinky so that it doesn't slip past it onto the blade. And that does definitely help when you're gonna go ahead and actuate the flipper when opening the knife. You do not see jimping here, so obviously they placed the jimping where it needed to be, and they knew that you really wouldn't need it here because this isn't a, a small enough knife to where you're gonna be using the jimping right here at the spine. In fact, you're probably gonna be using it more in this kind of a position because you're using it to cut things. You can cut meat with it, you can food prep with it, you can you know, you, you can curl wood with it, uh, you can use it to open up boxes or letters at, uh, you know, in a meeting or at the office, and you're gonna get a lot of uh, cutting performance it, it more than say your standard 440c with this akuto 440 aichi steel from japan uh from the tangram amarillo now this is a chinese knife this does come from the kaiser uh brand this is their sub brand uh, tangram but they did have um this specifically made to their spec at their factory they use very similar materials you do have a deep carry clip and there's a lot to like about this knife now the only problem is is that you're going to find this in very very few places you're going to find it in, uh, in Amazon. You're probably going to find it on, on eBay. And with the exception of that, you're probably going to find it on the secondary market. That's about it. And uh, unfortunately, I have a feeling that they're, they discontinued the Tangram knife of lines, which, uh, excuse me, the line of knives, <laughs> uh, because of the fact that I haven't seen any more uh, releases from them, which is kind of 
disappointing because they were really on a roll with some of these. I mean, they had Azo, they had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Dirk Pinkerton uh, as a designer. They had a lot of different designs, uh, both fixed blade and folder that came out from the line. So, I mean, if you have a chance, go ahead and pick up one of these. The only other company that I know that came up with something that used uh, a Kudo Steel and I'm not even sure if it's Akuto 440 was CRK team years ago um, that they used Akuto Plus, which is kind of like a derivative of what they were trying to make, you know, uh, kind of getting increased cutability out of a budget steel like 440C. Uh, 440C was a great steel. In fact, the first um, Benchmade Grotillions came out in 440C before they came out in 154CM and then subsequently in S30V like they are right now. But a Kudo 440 is actually like a 440C plus. If I were to go ahead and put it in, a, in a kind of a usability, I'd say it would be something along the lines of say 14C28N, which is a great bud budget steel that you get from Sandvik. And that's something that Rake uses a lot and um, that you see on a few other budget designs. So don't sleep on the Akuto 440 from the Tangram lines. And this is the Tangram Amarillo, uh, or as the Latin people would say, Amarillo. Alrighty guys, we are down to the last one. And last but not least, certainly not least, is the Artisan Cutlery Arkeo in brass. Now they have a bunch of different versions of the Arkeo. This is a Dylan Mallory design, and I'm really psyched to be able to talk about this one because I, I really like uh, Dylan's design. And just to kind of give you a little bit of a heads up on this, uh, the Arkeo is not a new design per se. It was new for 2019, and it was actually something that really uh, kind of spearheaded a lot of the sales for artisan cutlery. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad about that because um, Dylan is a Georgia boy. OK, uh, he's a really nice guy. He, you know, I've been able to hang out with him on a few occasions. Uh, I, you know, met him at, at Blade Show. Uh, we've been talking a lot of, since and we got to hang out a lot over at SHOT Show. We went out to have dinner, uh, you know, amongst him and, and the artisan rep and, and my friend Eric from the Outer Limitless YouTube channel. And he talked a little bit about this particular knife. Um, I've always wanted to get a version. I actually wanted to get the, the, the budget version, which is in D2 and uh, Contour G10 or Flat G10. I really wanted to get the Contour G10 version uh, of the Arkeo. Uh, and I just, I never got around to getting it. And then Smoky Mountain Knife Works, which by the way, shout out to Smoky Mountain Knife Works for this awesome freaking knife. Uh, they came out with this particular model, uh, the small version and the large version in brass and copper. Now, everybody gets the copper stuff and I get it. I mean, it's a great, great design. I like copper a lot, but I mean, brass, that's, it's different and I, I really like it. And I feel that the brass versions are a little bit tougher than copper. So I went ahead and I picked this up from Smoky Mountain Knife Works for 49 freaking 95. And that's awesome. For this, I mean, this is really, really nice. You get D2 steel. This is the Dylan Mallory design. Um, and it is a flipper. Um, it, he actually has a, a, a similar design with CJRB called the Centros, but unlike this one, um, this one actually comes in a small and a large and it's a flipper as opposed to the Centros, which is thumb stud only and it's only in a large from the budget line. Now, the cool thing is you're getting artisan quality with D2 steel that isn't CJRB. It's a flipper design on bearings from Dylan Mallory in like basically it's, it's kind of like a high quality you know, low on the budget scale. And I, I think it's really nice. It's a little bit heavier than uh, the other knives that you would see with like G10, you know, or skeleton, skeletonized liners or even the wood version, you know, of the Elementum. But I mean, this this knife, it even it, it even has like a bit of a snap to it, but it's it's kind of a, oof, I like that action. And, and I mean, just the size of it, it, it works really well. You have the, the jimping here in the back, um, it, the, the the blade kind of reminds me of that of the Kershaw Leak, but I feel like this is so much sleeker. It is flat, um, but you have these brass scales that give it that nice heft. And I mean, it's it's really, really nice. Um, it is not tapped for a lanyard hole, but it actually has something here in the spine that allows you to be able to go ahead and, and attach a lanyard to it. So it, it, this is actually a little nuance in the design that I thought was really cool. It is tapped for left and right hand carry. This is a liner lock. And it, even though it is brass, it does have these pivot collars 
with the uh, the artisan design in the pivot itself, but you also have the artisan design on the blade, on the show side, and then on the clip side, you have the Mallory M, the uh, designation of the fact that it is in China. Uh, it does have its own individualized serial. It says it's D2, and the design is by Dylan Mallory. So you get the nice little um, hole there, which I don't really believe I've ever used it to open, but it obviously looks like you can open it, and it does click. Um, the tent ball works really well with this. You feel the detent is nice and um, yeah, it flicks out really well. This is something that I feel works awesome for like a Sunday school carry or um, you know, uh, an office carry. I think it's really nice and I think you really should check it out. These are in limited qualities and you, uh, quantities and you can only pick up the brass and the copper versions from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. So if you are interested in picking this up, you might as well get your ass over there while you can and pick it up because once they're gone, they're pretty much gone. I showed this to Dylan Mallory and to, to Russ, the artisan rep, and they didn't even know that these were out. So um, I, I, I showed it to them. They were kind of impressed by the fact that they had, they had come out with these already and the build quality is awesome. Plus with brass and copper, you're gonna get that kind of patina look. This is relatively new. I've had it for only a couple of weeks and I haven't been able to use it too, too much because I've been busy carrying a lot of other knives, but I'm gonna be carrying this and I'm probably gonna be doing a nice little patina project on it. So be on the lookout for that. And the, the formal review of this guy, which is the Artisan Cutlery uh, Smoky Knife Works uh, uh, exclusive uh, Arkeo in brass. This is the small Arkeo. Uh, D2 steel, brass scales, deep carry clip, tap for left and right. This is some awesomeness. So there it is, guys. Uh, go ahead and check that out when you have a moment. $49.95 on the Smoky Mountain Knife Works website. Definitely worth checking out. All right, guys, so there you have it. You got five different knives right there that um, I, I would really recommend. It's kind of an updated list that you would see typically on YouTube of knives that you can get and use in the office. I think that they would work really well. Some are really good to be able to use and give to somebody. Some are good for, for food prep. Some are good during the week. And then for that casual Friday, sometimes out of casual Friday. And then some you just kind of want to use as a secondary knife, something you keep in your third pocket. Uh, I'm sorry, your fifth pocket and something that you really wouldn't give to other people. So uh, in, in you know, no particular order, you have the CJRB Feldspar. This is the small version. You have the Best Tech Tulip, the Old Stop Hell version in uh, M390 from Best Tech. <laughs> you have the uh, Tangram Amarillo in Akuro 440. This uh, Japanese Akuro 440 steel. You have the Civivi Elementum. This is the uh, ebony wood in D2. And then you have the Artisan Cutlery Archaeo Brass in D2. This is the small version, which is the exclusive from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Any of these would suit you really well in the office setting. And some of them would work really well on a casual Friday, maybe a Sunday school type of thing, or even if you're just gonna use them out for everyday carry. I highly recommend all of these. Some a little bit more than others, but if you choose any of these five, you will not uh, be disappointed. So go ahead and check them out. And remember, no matter which knife of these that you choose to carry, as long as you EDC, if you EDC, think of DCS. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to go ahead and follow me on Instagram and uh, be sure to subscribe. I am on the, uh, the journey to 1,000 followers. I'm getting close and hopefully you are one of those. And if not, please be sure to subscribe so that you can go ahead and be one of the first to know when I come out with new uh, videos such as these. And um, yeah, I hope to hear from you guys soon. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and message me on Instagram at Daily Carry Solutions or uh, contact me via email at Daily Carry Solutions. Uh, at gmail.com. Take it easy, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.